Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah a question was asked assalamu alaikum I hope you are in the best health and iman and I hope the same for you as well I mean ya rabbil alameen uh, my brother listens to some individuals that are known not to be on the Salafi Minhaj Yasir Qadi and Nu'man Ali Khan to name a few how should I caution my brother as he is older than me I've tried in the past and he thinks I have Hizbiya to the Salafis also on a side note whilst reading Arabic books such as Zad al-Ma'ad is it best to stop at every word I don't, I don't understand and translate it also should I write all these words down uh, sorry for such a long message. Jazakallah khairan. And I pray to Allah that he makes your scale heavy and full of good deeds because of your effort to teach the religion. Ameen. Wa'iyakum. Uh, first and foremost, the first part of what you asked, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq, uh, is that, as you mentioned, he's your older brother. So show him respect. Be kind and gentle with him. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that nothing good ex comes except by being gentle. That gentleness, rifq, walin, uh, and kindness and gentleness, in general most people respond better to that than being harsh and severe on the people and stern on the people. And this is one of the reasons why we have uh, so many people who if you want to say that have is there sort of a backlash towards uh, ahl sunnah and towards people using the term salafi and so on and so forth and part of the reason for that or a big part of the reason for that and this is not unique to us in the english speaking world but around the world unfortunately in many many countries arabic non arab people who uh, associate themselves with the minhaj of the salaf have not always been befitting in earning that uh, association meaning that they haven't been practicing the son of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in its completeness and lacking very much in manners and how to deal with people and following following up on the usul of ahl sunnah and this minhaj rabbaniya uh, from the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how gentle and kind he was in general with the people and that when there's and that from hikmah is knowing when to be stern and when to be gentle and this takes hikmah it takes knowledge it takes wisdom it takes experience so uh, unfortunately a lot of times people studied a little bit or they may have studied a lot but they were just stern and harsh and this is the perception that they had for various reasons and i i can speak about it even from major students that were super close to mashaykh for example in yemen and some of the things that i witnessed personally and likewise many examples i can mention here in saudi arabia as well people who are close to ulama even but it seems that they didn't gain those benefits fully from the scholars and articulate that and show the people that because why would someone want to come to the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah, Dawah to Salafia if they see only harshness, if they see only ugliness, they see only splitting, they see only division, they see only hatred, they see you own, only thing that they learn from you is that he's on it and he's on it, he's off it and he's off it. If that's the only thing that people learn then of course why would they learn and how can they associate that with the minhaj of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how can they associate that to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Of course, it, it makes no sense because this is not what the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. So this is khalal, this is shortcomings that we have and that we have had over the years in scaring and destroying the da'wah and unfortunately there's still many out there who destroy the da'wah every time there's something good every time good rears its head they come with 50 ways of evil to destroy it so don't be like them may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and them and guide us in them i mean 
So, getting specifically to your question, uh, your brother listens to Yasser Qadi and Nu'man, whoever your brother listens to, that I would say that again, respond to him with gentleness and with hujju wal bayan, with dalil, with evidence. If you uh, know something about Yasser Qadi, nas, you know, from a, a words that he has said and in the context that he, he explained it, and that you know and understand that this goes against the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah, then yes, bait, clarify that for him. Or you can maybe a general clarification. Well, many of the scholars, many of the students of knowledge, they followed up his thing, and you can send your brother these kind of things. Uh, no man said this, or he does this, or whatever the case may be. So you can do that, but you want to do it based on truth, not falsehood, and based on what they say. For example, Many people have take exception with the fact that I speak, well, I have spoken in the past about those individuals, and likewise uh, continue to speak about certain tekfiris like Faisal Jamaiki. There you go, there's his name. And with that, people make tekfir of me, call me a hypocrite, call me this scholar for doll, you know, call me all kind of things. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us in them, and guide, and, and when I speak about him, if you notice, if you go back to anything that I've said, most every time I've opened my mouth about that man, it's with a text that he said. It's with deviance and evil and wickedness and shaitania that he has brought. He said it, not me. So if you have a problem, you need to go back. You need to learn your religion and learn and make muqarana. Compare what this man said compared to the minhaj of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam and the madhab of the Salaf, Salaf as -Sarih. Ridwan Allahi alayhim wa ulama rabbaniyun ila ayamina hadha. Up, up until now, this minhaj, it's still here. The Prophet sallallahu said, La tizal taifatum min umati dhahirin ala haq hatta yatihum amr allahum ala dhalik. There won't cease to be a group from my uh, nation that continues to be on the truth until the hour is established. So Ahl Sunnah is going to be mojood somewhere in this earth pretty uh, until as one of the, the you know the last signs of the day of judgment until that till that till the end of time till the hour is established so it lets us know al sunnah mojood now they're here and they will continue to be uh, apparent and even if they're small in numbers but the ibra the 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 proof is going to be on what they on their uh their madhab their menhaj, their methodology for understanding Islam, their me methodology for engaging with the text, their methodology for explaining the text, their creed, which is taken from the text, not developing a creed as Ahl Bid'ah does, and then scrambling to the kitab and scrambling to the sunnah to try to authenticate what they believe, but rather Ahl Sunnah bil aks. Ahl Sunnah, they uh, deduce their creed, deduce their menhaj, their methodology, deduce their understanding, their istinbad on how to, uh, to uh, extract uh, adilla and how to apply evidences from the book of Allah and the son of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I'm going to keep saying this as our Shaykh Imam Mukbil bin Hadi Al-Wadi'i Allah Yarhamu said, Dawa to Ahlu Sunnah, Dawa tun min kitabi la ila kitabi la wa min sunnati Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi wa la alihi wa sallam illa sunnati Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi wa la alihi wa sallam. There's so much fwaid in that, in that statement. It's so simple. It's so simple, but it has immense meaning if we ponder. We can break down and make that a whole lesson or a series of lessons. Probably you could write a book from that beautiful statement, which it comes from the simplicity of really if we understand and practice the Madhab of the Salaf. So, making sure if you speak about someone, speak about them with ilm. And make sure you don't go beyond the bounds. Don't lie about them. Don't slander them. Don't gain sins, even if they are mubtadi'ah or they made mistakes and, and whatever the case may be. Don't go beyond the bounds. Because you don't know, maybe Allah will guide them and they'll be on the sunnah and you may be misguided and you may go off the sunnah. Wa'iyadhan billah, wa'iyakum min dhalik. So very important to be gentle and show and illustrate for your brother. Uh, and 
he's going to think that you has, have his be until you show him otherwise. Don't make ta'asib. Don't say you have to listen to these five brothers in uh, Cardiff or in London or in Birmingham or in Brixton or in Croydon or in Seattle or in LA. No, don't restrict it because alhamd, ahl sunnah mawjood. And they're all over. They're all over Indonesia, all over Somalia, from Mogadishu to Somaliland, to Bos Bosaso, to uh, Ethiopia, to Jigga Jigga, to uh, Addis Ababa. So they're everywhere. They're in Sweden, they're in France, they're in Germany, and, and, and in a particular city, and they're in a particular city. So Ahl Sunnah Mojud is not restricted to a few people's uh, understanding, nor a few people, you know, gaining the permission of a few people. That's not what the Minhaj of Ahl Sunnah is. It's Kitab wa Sunnah. And uh, you also mentioned about your your studies and my advice would be to go to those people who have very strong knowledge and ask them and i seen that the brother uh the two brothers may allah bless them uh, uh abu taymiyyah and uh abdurrahman hassan allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored them they have youth and they have knowledge and they have hiths and they are going forward and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them and preserve them as with many of our du'at al-khair we have kathra we have so many really in fact we do in the west there's many people from ahl sunnah that you can benefit from and benefit from their knowledge and so what i just wanted to point out just because i've seen that they speak about some of those topics and about how to gain knowledge so they can give you much better advice in how to do those things but in general i would just say whatever works for you that is that some of the brothers that I know that really memorized and really were strong in Arabic. I asked one of them who was in Damaj for about 12 years, if I recall, uh, was a close brother of mine at one point. Not that we're not, but, you know, I don't know what his opinion of me is now. But anyhow, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. And I asked him once, one of the last times I was there in Damaj to visit many years ago, and he said... Uh, he said he didn't memorize vocabulary like that. He didn't write down because I said, do you write down stuff? Da, 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 da. How do you improve? He said, no, you know, I just read. And, you know, so I think that's going to be more fluent for you. And then if you want to to know and really understand a particular passage or even what helps you as you go along is when you is start translating stuff. Start translating for yourself. Don't just translate and put out stuff because how many books and how many things do we have people who just learned a little bit of Arabic that destroy some of the meanings and everything else because they were in a hurry to translate and push it out there and i can recall one particular individual and i know he studied in yemen but i won't say any other things but i was shocked i remember his one of the first translations he put out and i was just like what in the world is that this guy doesn't even know english he didn't know english and the, so he was destroying the Arabic. The point is that you translate, you're supposed to articulate from one language to another. So this is the point of Habitifillah, is don't be mustajil. Don't be mustajil to go out there and do dawah. You know, take your time and learn and, and benefit. And do those things for yourself to strengthen yourself. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.